Thanks very much. Um, I, I get to speak to a few different uh, types of audiences uh, in my line of work. Um, I don't get to talk to a, a whole uh, filled with heroes uh, every day, uh, so it's a, a real privilege to be here. Um, and thanks very much uh, to Dave, and congratulations uh, to, for, for the organization of today's, uh, today's conference. So um, I was going to talk a little bit about sudden cardiac death, focusing perhaps on, on younger people and some of the, uh, the less common causes of sudden cardiac death. I think you're all fairly familiar with the, the numbers that we're, we, we speak about. Um, roughly 2,000 uh, call-outs by the National Ambulance Service and, and DFB for, uh, for cardiac arrests uh, in Ireland. Uh, there are more cardiac arrests than this. There are people who die suddenly and unexpectedly and are simply found too late uh, and there is no, uh, no response to them um, and it, it's hard to know what to do about them other than identifying their condition before the cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrests occur everywhere. You've seen these maps before. It is simply impossible for an ambulance service to get there in time. Simply impossible. And the only way to solve this problem is through community first response. Cardiac arrests occur at uh, all ages, um, uh, peaking perhaps in the 60s um, and 70s. But they do also occur um, at younger age groups. And as you can see, there are cardiac arrests in people under 50 and certainly under 40, as you're well familiar with. Um, when you look at the underlying cause of cardiac arrest in the general population, you can see here that shown in red, the overwhelming cause is coronary artery disease. Uh, narrowings and blockages in coronary arteries uh, causing a, a lethal uh, ventricular arrhythmia. And I think the Department of Health and Public Health Medicine has done a very good job in promoting the concept of prevention uh, through exercise, through, uh, through keeping uh, weight under control, and through treat, prevent, stopping cigarette smoking and treating hypertension, high cholesterol, um, and preventing diabetes. And I think they've done a very good job in that respect. The trouble is that when you focus on the younger population, those under 40 years of age, these tend not to be coronary disease. These tend to be inherited cardiac conditions, genetic conditions that cause abnormalities in the heart muscle, cardiomyopathies, or abnormalities in the heart's electrical system, which we call channelopathies. Now, the, the trouble with these is not only do they affect younger people, but because they're genetic, they can affect other family members. So uh, this is a, a sort of a, a double hit. So shown here is um, the, the final common pathway, ventricular fibrillation, which you're all very familiar with. So there are many potential causes for this. Shown in the bottom left corner is the, the dominant cause, coronary artery disease. And while most people think of this as being a blood clot acutely blocking off a coronary artery, this is only actually happening in about a quarter of cardiac arrests. About three quarters of cardiac arrests are occurring in people um, who have stable coronary artery disease or people who have an old MI, an old scar in their heart from a previous heart attack that has made them electrically unstable. There are these other conditions and these are the causes of uh, non-coronary non cardiac arrests. So these are the electrical ones down here in the bottom right. These are the heart muscle, the cardiomyopathy ones up here in the, the top right, which you can't see too well. And then there's a, a, a few stragglers over here that I'll discuss. When you get down to the under 40, under 45 population, they're much more evenly distributed between these four causes. In the over 40 population, it's quite dominantly, uh, predominantly coronary artery disease. This is a, a study that's about 10 years old now. Um, uh, looking at the causes of sudden cardiac death in young people in Ireland and these are people between 15 and 35 years of age and there were 120 of them about 40 a year who died between 2005 and 2007 when you look at the autopsies to find out what was the actual disease that they had the commonest finding interestingly was nothing there was no identifiable abnormality on autopsy. 
That's because these are the electrical conditions, the channelopathy conditions that don't show up on an autopsy. And the only way to diagnose them is to see somebody while they're still alive and do an ECG or on post-mortem to do what we call a molecular autopsy where you go and look for the genetic abnormality responsible for the channelopathy that killed the person. Next commonest cause was coronary artery disease. This is really in the 30 to 35 year old age group. And then cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, and then there's a few other uh, cardiomyopathies up there. Dilated cardiomyopathy and right ventricular cardiomyopathy. But shown in yellow and accounting for probably about three quarters of these cases are genetic conditions, conditions, inherited conditions. So sudden cardiac death in the young, just how rare is it? I remember when I was training as a doctor, I was told, tell them, tell them it's about one in a hundred thousand. That's, that's the likelihood of a sudden cardiac death. So just to look at the numbers in a little bit more detail. From our data uh, from here, the incidence is actually 2.7 per 100,000 per year, 4.4 for males, and 0 0.22 uh, is sports-related. So it's significantly higher in males uh, than in females. So if you take that uh, 2.7 per 100,000, 4.4 per 100,000 per year for males, but the trouble is that it's for each year, each year between 15 and 35 years of age. So that amounts to 88 per 100,000 males between 15 and 35. Then you can add in about 35 per 100,000 for males under one. These are the SIDS deaths, which are really the same cause. A lot of these are the channelopathies. Um, and then there's about 20 per 100,000 between one and 15 years of age. This amounts to 143 per 100,000 or about one in 700. About one in 700. That's not one in 100,000. It's not, it's not incredibly common, but about one in 700. So these are some of the conditions, and just briefly to, to show you, this is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a genetic heart muscle condition where the heart muscle gets too thick. Um, it's due to genetic mutations in the proteins in the heart muscle, troponin and myosin. These are the, the proteins that are abnormal and cause the, the heart muscle to thicken up. Right ventricular cardiomyopathy, another heart muscle condition where the right ventricle develops scar and becomes dilated and electrically unstable. Dilated cardiomyopathy, um, again, commonly genetic, but can also be caused by alcohol or viral infections, and, uh, and that can cause sudden cardiac death. SADS specifically refers to sudden cardiac death when the autopsy is normal. And the conditions that cause it, most commonly in Ireland, long QT syndrome, and then there's these other conditions as well, Brugada syndrome, Wolf-Parkinson-White is a non-genetic condition with no family implications, but that can also cause people to, to drop dead suddenly. This is just looking at the SIDS numbers and how they have fallen over the years, particularly with the Back to Sleep campaign, um, but down to about 35 per 100,000 uh, per year now. Just to mention that there are, there are certainly um, gene mutations that have been identified in families with both SIDS and with SADS. So this is the common link between the two, these, these genetic conditions. This is just to show you somebody with that uh, condition, Wolf Parkinson White. This is where you have an extra a pathway in the heart connecting the atria and ventricles that can make it unstable and when you go into atrial fibrillation a common benign arrhythmia in these people it can be fatal um, as is shown on this ECG. So here's one for you, commotio cordis, I don't know if you've heard of this, this refers to blunt trauma to the front of the chest, a bang to the chest at the right moment in the cardiac cycle will put a normal heart into cardiac arrest. And the treatment for that is the same as anybody else, an electrical shock. Um, and when you get them back, what treatment do they need after the cardiac arrest? Do they need an implantable defibrillator? They need nothing. They've got a totally normal heart. They just need to make sure they don't get punched in the chest at the, at the wrong moment in their, in their heartbeat. Uh, this is a tragic uh, set of pictures showing a young karate fighter getting a punch in the chest and dropping dead. 
Um, he unfortunately wasn't resuscitated, unlike this young uh, softball player who got a ball to the chest uh, and was resuscitated by the guards. Um, anomalous coronary arteries, another cause um, which is very hard to screen for, uh, but narrowings uh, in the arteries, they exercise and collapse suddenly. This is Professor Connor Ward, who 51 years ago was the first person in the world to describe long QT syndrome. Irish, paediatric cardiologist from Crumlin. This is the QT interval. Um, it's measured by looking at the downslope of the T wave from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. Um, basically, if the end of the T wave is more than half the way to the next QRS interval, think of this, think of long QT syndrome. Um, the common drugs that are given in a cardiac arrest for VT or VFib, adrenaline and amiodarone, both of which are contraindicated in long QT syndrome. So just to, just to be aware of that. Now that you should not change your general approach to cardiac arrest, but if somebody is screaming at you, they've got long QT syndrome, we know this person has long QT syndrome, beware of adrenaline and uh, amiodarone. Um, so I'm just in the interest of time, I think I'll skip through a lot of these. So when we see somebody with long QT syndrome, we risk stratify them based on the length of their QT interval, whether they've had blackouts or fainting spells, and whether they've had sudden death in the family already. If they've had those risk factors, then we protect them either with beta blocker medicines, if they're low or moderate risk, or with an implantable cardiac defibrillator, if they're high risk. Um, another condition, this is Brugada syndrome, uh, first named by these three Brugada brothers up here. Um, if you see somebody with this, their ECG looks like they're having a heart attack, looks like they're having an ST elevation MI in lead V1 and V2, but it's a strange ST elevation MI because the ST segment is down sloping, strikingly down sloping, um, and these patients uh, just require defibrillation. Their coronary arteries will probably be normal. Um, this is another condition, catecholaminergic polymorphic VT. Um, adrenaline can be very dangerous uh, with this particular condition. So at the time of death, there's a number of things that we do. In, uh, I'm moving on now to people who don't survive a cardiac arrest. But when someone doesn't survive, we need to get to the bottom of what caused their death. So we try and get as much details of a, the deceased person as possible. We take blood and tissue samples on all young cardiac arrests under 45 ye years of age in Ireland, and they're sent to the matter, and they're stored there. And we can then do genetic testing, molecular autopsy, if a family uh, wishes that to be done, to find out what the genetic cause of that young person's uh, death was. And that's critically important for future generations. So the role of genetics is something that's rapidly expanding now in Ireland. Um, for the prevention of sudden cardiac death. So when we have a cardiac, sudden cardiac death victim and, um, and they've had an autopsy, we'll get a blood or tissue sample from them and we can often identify the, uh, the, the cause of, their, uh, uh, of, of the sudden death. So I just wanted to finish up by speaking to you about um, a, uh, the concept of a network, a network for the prevention of sudden cardiac death. And you're a critical part of that. Um, as this is the, the basic premise of the way things have been up till now with a cardiac arrest call coming in, ambulance being sent and in 133 communities in Ireland a CFR team being activated. Um, whether it's Good Sam or whether it's some other alternative um, first responder alert system being uh, uh, used, this will hopefully simplify things uh, in the future and I think there's enormous potential here to go from our current 120 lives saved to 900 plus lives saved in Ireland. Now that's extraordinary. I can tell you from within hospitals, there's nothing that comes close to this in terms of potential for lives being saved. Um, other components of the network, for just after the, the priority here is obviously to prevent death. When death unfortunately occurs, we have to diagnose those who die. What was the cause of the death? Because this can have major implications for other family members. And this is done through pathology, um, a, a proper autopsy, 
um, and um, when we can, finding the uh, underlying genetic cause. And this we do through, we call this protect the living, through family screening clinics. And we have these up and running in, in the Matter Hospital um, and also in Tala and in Crumlin, whereby we see family members of a sudden cardiac death uh, victim and uh, see who else in the family may have the same condition and uh, offer them the protection that they need. Uh, we also offer genetic counselling. Um, and then the last component is gathering the data. And uh, I think the, the real leaders in this have been the Out of Hospital Cardiac Arrest Registry, OCAR, uh, through uh, Siobhan um, and Meta um, and the rest of the group in, uh, in OCAR. Um, and then I guess just to finish up by saying that concept of saving 870 uh, lives per year, um, nothing comes close in all of medicine. Um, all of the angioplasty and bypass surgery that's, that, that's done in the country, we certainly probably save a couple of hundred lives, but nothing like this. So um, thank you. Thank you very, very much for your time, and thank you for, uh, for everything that you do.